Hello, and welcome to the Sanctuary of Light and the Light Institute Sunday Meditation here in New Mexico. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, there's a way that we do this meditation together. We divide it into three parts, and in the first part, we ask our divine higher self to take form. And whatever that form is, um, it is the intuitive essence of your soul, it's your own inner voice. So just imagine a form that comes, and then we'll ask your higher self to touch your body and draw your higher self into your body, and you can sit in meditation. Because we're using all this technology, uh, you can push your button on pause so that you can meditate for as long as you like. And in the second part of the meditation, we do what we call the practice of radiance, where we reach up into the cosmos and draw down a beautiful beam of white light down to the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, your stomach. And from there, we laser that white light out across the planet and back up into the sky and into the cosmos. And so as you breathe in, you just draw it down, exhale, laser it out. And just continue to do that for as long as you like. That practice will bring you into a quickening of your consciousness, but a calming of your thoughts. And then in the third part, each week, we pick a situation or something that we want to extend our higher frequency out to support the highest potential of that situation. This week, we're going to extend our conscious awareness and our conscious uh, strength and, and help to Mother Earth. Mother Earth has been suffering from floods and burns, and there's a, a necessity of rejuvenation. So we want to help to bring that about. We humans, we've been cutting down our beautiful rainforests. Uh, we have been engaged in a lot of things that we feel benefit us, but do not benefit nature. Uh, and all those who live in these places that we, that we um, somehow shift their actual purpose. So we're going to extend a frequency of light to Earth so that she can regenerate, rejuvenate, uh, that those trees will grow back, that, that things will calm, that the, the oceans will clear, the skies will clear, all of those things. And so as we do that, whatever comes into your mind, whether it's you know the rainforest or the earth itself or the oceans or whatever it is, will send light that there's a rejuvenating process that is, uh, needs to be sped up a bit uh, to rebalance what has happened. Ready? Close your eyes. We'll begin with our breath to quiet our minds. So breathe in through your nose and exhale very slowly through your mouth. Once more, breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Good. And now ask your higher self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, to take a form for you. It could be a being, a light, a tree, an animal, even an equation. Just ask your higher self to take a form that will support and illuminate you now. Whatever comes to you, just hold that in your consciousness. <laughs> and now ask your higher self to touch your body where you hold your divine essence at this moment. It could be anywhere in your body. Just imagine that touch. That's it. Breathe into the touch of your higher self. Contacting, uplifting and quickening your physicality. 
And now wherever that touch was, just imagine that you're drawing your higher self in through that point, making that a spin point of your divine essence and draw your higher self in through that point and then sit in meditation. Breathe deeply into your body. And now imagine that you could reach up into the cosmos and pull down an exquisite beam of white light, the fastest frequency, down to the top of your head, all the way down to your stomach, your solar plexus. And from there, as you exhale, laser that beam of light out from you. Imagine it going across our planet and back into the sky, to the cosmos, and then breathing it down to the top of your head and extending it out to your solar plexus. Just continue to do that again. It will bring you into a deep state of peace and meditation. Take a deep breath into your body and just ask Earth to take form for you. Maybe you see the oceans or the forests or the deserts or any part of the whole planet. Ask her to take a form that needs our support in order to rejuvenate. See what you get. Mm-hmm. And now, ask that point on Earth or all of Earth or whatever you perceived, what frequency of light, what color it needs from you to be able to regenerate and rejuvenate from this moment forward. And then whatever color that is, or energy that is, just imagine that you're drawing it from the cosmos, never comes from us, only through us, and laser that color out to earth, to whatever you perceived, forests, deserts, whole planet, sky, the oceans, the mountains, whatever came to you, draw that color Again, down from the cosmos and laser it out to our planet. With that energy, that frequency of light that will trigger an activation, an amplification of regeneration, rejuvenation, send it out to Earth. Um. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. Great. Thank you so much for giving your energy, your consciousness into this is beloved home for us at this moment. We have another part of our meditation. It's called Knowings. And people from around the world send in questions every week uh, for us to uh, sort of massage in order to uplift us, to amplify our illumination in terms of those, those points of references. And so Allison will tell us the questions that have come for this week. The first question is from Cairo, Egypt. Cairo. Mm -hmm. Chris Griscom, please, how do we battle evil without fighting or war? Mm. Mm. That is something that is actually within us. We actually know how to do it, but we're entrapped in in the squeezing of our judgments. 
So the first thing I'd say to you is that um, we need to dissolve the word evil. Evil is the word life backwards. But uh, evil ha- is such a connotation, a religious one. It's definitely, uh, when we say the word evil, we see that as something very different from us, very dangerous to us. And when we talk about uh, combating that or, or trying to change that, we, we have to just see it as an energy that is there, and not something that's necessarily mm, going to mm, kill us or change our lives. The best way that we can confront uh, negativity, darkness, uh, illusions, uh, um, the, I, I know what you're saying, the atrocities of war, the inhumane way that humans treat each other, is to live a life that looks upon the world and every time you see something that could create a war, that you, you give it something that could feed its consciousness, could help it to change from that, from that perspective. No, we can't really stop wars. On the other hand, uh, first of all, I always say, begin by saying, where is the war in me? Where is the war in me? Because, again, if inside us we're always thinking, this is evil, this is bad, then we create this separation. When you create that separation, that is a fight or flight uh, survival uh, perspective, then you really are not going to be willing to put a higher frequency in in, into healing that, rather than um, overriding something that to you is evil or brings about war. We want to say, my consciousness can offer something to that kind of negativity that might be able to remind it of its true self. All negative, bad um, energies are there because there is no light, because there is not consciousness. And so the most important thing that we can do is to participate. We are all here because of that. Uh, Not to be hurt by war or negativity, but to, to remember that as we respond from a higher perspective, we create an evolution, and that evolution includes all humans and then ripples out onto this planet. So, uh, what I would say is um, this close your eyes. This is an exercise in consciousness. Take a deep breath into your body and ask your body to give you an image or a sense of something or some someone that you consider evil. Again, they are evil to you because you don't know them. They may be doing terrible things, but it isn't the whole story. So bring them into your mind's eye without fear and without creating that impossible, unhealing kind of separation. Have you got them? It could be a person, it could be a group of people, it could be a nation. Just bring it into your mind's eye and ask that person, nation, place, religion, race, whatever it is. Ask it the color it needs from you to be replete, to, to be released from that uh, enactment darkness, of negativity, and to remember its true self, or their true self. So take a deep breath and ask, what color do you need for me to remember the good in you, and who you really are? What's the color that comes to you immediately? Whatever that color is, Reach up into the cosmos and draw exactly that frequency of light down through the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, your stomach, and laser it out to that energy, to that, those beings that you consider to be bad. And give the light and see what happens. They ask for the color so they won't resist it. You are not giving it from an emotional, judgmental place but from a place in which all humans are sourced, a divine source. 
We all forget that many times in many lifetimes. Whatever that color is, again, continue to draw it down and to laser it out until you feel a shift. Maybe they smile or maybe they, they shift uh, their size or maybe they dissolve away. Because you have given an energy that gives a choice how to belong to us all together or how to free from the anger, the hurt that causes that kind of ego. You're doing it a little bit more. And take a deep breath and open your eyes. See, when you do that, your fear of that and your and that abject um, attempting to get away from it will bring you to a higher octave where you realize you have something to give without fear, without danger, and that what you give is what all humans need, is the evolution of the soul, a, a, a possibility of experiencing goodness and safety. So thank you so much, Cairo. I've been with you. I love you. Allison, the second question? It's from Little Rock, Arkansas, in the USA. Dear Chris, why is it that in groups, large and small, personal and global, there are always members who can't get along? What will it take for us all to just get along? <laughs> well, immediately it comes to mind is that, you know, I want to say to all of you, you're, you're not here to suffer the, the distance or the, uh, the fear of each other or... Uh, the judgment of each other. But we as a soul family, as a soul group, have all come here because we've incarnated many times. And so this is a pivotal time of evolution, not only for humans, but for the planet that we inhabit as well. And so what's happening is that all these energies are coming up. And they're coming up because we're here to find the answers. How can we help people to get along? We have to help people to awaken a higher level of consciousness that says it's not about uh, um, the king of the mountain. It's not about who's going to win. It's, it's not about survival. It's not. It's about, for perhaps the first time in human history, for us to come together. Well, we've never done it, and so it's hard for us. We don't trust each other. We don't trust ourselves. And so, of course, there are always in a group people who can't get along. Uh, one of the things that I would say to you, just as the exercise we just did, is that if you see two people not getting along, you want to extend them both a frequency of light. The reason we use light is it's the cosmic language. It's the language of, of the unmanifest and of the manifest, it's the language of the soul. And so when you send light to them, People could be shouting at each other. If you were able to pull whatever color they ask for that you ask in your mind what it is and draw it down and extend it to them, you would be amazed. They will stop yelling. They will stop because they're getting something that is germane to what they need. And so uh, I would say to you that if you find yourself in, an, in a group and people are not getting along. I'm not talking about seeing it on television or hearing about it, but, but rather uh, look around in your life and see where there are those, that polarity of people who don't like each other. And remember that you cannot really know why. History doesn't really tell us why, because if you say, well, they did that to these groups uh, before, but then if you went back before that before, you would find it flipped the other direction. And so um, we never want to, uh, to really hang on to who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, uh, who should win, but rather how we, uh, in our own lives, dissolve that and then apply that on a planetary level. Because it's, this, is, it, this is a time when war is obsolete. Because war can not only kill and maim and hurt individuals. It can hurt collective beings who have not come here uh, just for that purpose. 
And so we do want to end a disagreement. Uh, we want to end a, uh, a confrontation. And in the end, we want to, and we want to dissolve all war. Now, so sending light uh, helps uh, clearing out uh, from your own life who is it you don't get along with. Sending them light lifts you up above it, releases the two of you, which is very powerful. And again, in terms of that war, uh, we want to realize that we're here to participate in whatever way we participate, whether it's with our bodies or with our consciousness or with our hearts, to, to really say, this, is, this does not belong to the world we inhabit or the world we are passing down uh, to our children. And so the more that we, in our minds, uh, release that illusion that you're right and they're wrong, uh, or any of those things, the more we can change so that people do not resort to killing other people because of whatever they think belongs to them. We do not own the earth. We do not own our planet. We own only our choices. And so the answer to that is really um, how we uplift our own consciousness and then imagine that we're seeding that out into the world so that the world can say, we, we can get along. And, and part of that is humans have never learned to share because when it's king of the mountain, uh, when it's who wins, it's never about the whole. And we are here at a time when everything depends on us learning to share uh, our consciousness, to share our world. And so this is new. You have to be a little patient if these things are happening and, uh, and begin to, from the inside, heal that. So begin with who you don't like in your life and, and know that if you will do that, if you will lift your own consciousness and look into those levels, you will be participating in this um, synergy and this psychic connection that we all have as humans to uh, help to heal the past um, illusions. It can be so, my friend. It can be so. But it depends on us. Alison. The last question is from Lucerne, Switzerland. Dearest Chris, I have heard you say many times that all the bad that is happening in the world is coming up so we can get rid of it. And this has sustained me. But these days I'm very afraid that there is so much bad that it will just consume us. Do you think this will happen? Oh my, look at these three questions uh, that are coming from our hearts today. They're all about what could, how can we get out of what we're in right now? <laughs> it's not going to be anything outside us. It's going to be something inside us. Do I think that the, the bad... The negative will override us? Absolutely not. It's easy to see only the terrible because our news presents it, uh, our movies present it, uh, our conversations between each other presents it on all of those levels. And so what I would say to you is begin to begin to look for uh, evolutionary things. Uh, people who are beginning to recognize each other and acknowledge each other and work together in your own life first, you know, and then you will feel that you can begin to trust humanity. See, I trust the human heart. I know how easy it is to think that someone is going to, to destroy you and, and what you hold dear. And uh, yes, we have to stand for what is true for us, but we have to recognize the hologram. So everywhere around you, people are uh, doing wonderful things. That they are evolving in wonderful ways. Uh, there's much more consciousness actually on the planet at this time. And what you've heard me say is what I was saying a moment ago, that we're all here because all of our history 
uh, tribe against tribe, brother against brother, my God against your God. All of that has created a poison that can no longer be part of our evolution. So it's coming up to be cleared, not coming up to take hold. It's already taken hold in past times. It is for us to have the illumination to say, this is what we are not. And uh, to remove ourselves from, from uh, uh, um, destroying the earth or destroying other humans, this is not our future. And so if you look for it, you'll find that more than ever before, people are uh, awakening. People are looking for something different. They're looking for who they are and the purpose of their life. Well, I can tell you that part of the purpose of all of our lives is to heal what is happening now. And, you know, the more conscious we are, the less these things can happen. I had a school, it was called the Nijoni School for Global Consciousness. And one of the things that we worked on is amplifying our intuition and our psychic connection, how we can reach in and touch the heart of others. Because the basic law of that is, if I can feel you, if I can know your heart, if I can hear your thoughts, you can't make war on me. And so we have to begin to say, how can we come together? Humans have never done it before. It's a really powerful choice that you and I and all of humanity have made to be on the planet at this time and be the ones who bring in uh, a kind of reality that will be passed to future generations. And we will do it. And it's happening day by now, day by day. Even now, wars that are happening around the planet, uh, people who are involved are beginning to say, we need diplomacy. We have to start con communicating with each other. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. And when we see that each one just needs to know, we all want the same thing. We want to be safe, we want to be fed, we want to be creative, we want to have a sense of purpose. All of that can begin to be answered in us, but never by war, by never by destruction. And so we're just beginning, but it's coming. So trust yourself and trust the heart of humans. Great love to you.